The Huskies are getting ready for a new season under a new head coach. Let's get an alumni's take on the matter. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back in to another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That right there, that's not Lars Hansen. That's Deshaun Williams. He's a former Washington Huskies and Seattle Seahawks tight end, and he now plays for the Everett Wolfpack in the AFL. Check them out starting in in April. That's right, you said, Deshaun. Uh, that's when mm. training camp opens up at Angel of the Winds Arena. And that down there, that gentleman is Lars Hansen. He writes for Inside the Huskies of Fan Nation Sports Illustrated. I write for Huskies Wire and I'm the site editor over there. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started so Deshaun I'll, I'll I'll kick us off here we're gonna have a lot of fun because you obviously are a local guy just just tell the everydayers a little bit about yourself yeah man so local local kid just like you said um went to school down in uh, Maple Valley uh Washington went to Tahoma High School Tahoma Junior High Tahoma Middle School as well um and then of it you know left to go my first two years of college were out of state in Colorado, came back once my um, younger brother, Amandre, had signed to play with UW. So that's what kind of brought me back. I wanted to reunite with that. Um, and then, yeah, man, just kind of growing up around, around not in Seattle, but just in the in the Western Washington area, man. I've, I've always been very familiar with not just Washington football, but Washington athletics, man. And I've been very fortunate and blessed enough to um, get to touch the highest level here, you know, um, signing with the Seahawks, uh, being on the practice squad as well. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's, there isn't any other higher professional team here in Washington. And I'm glad as like a Washington kid to have been able to, to do that, you know, and hopefully, you know, do that again. So, um, so yeah. No, that's that's great. That's what we love to hear. So I, I've got a bit of a, a two part question for you. The first part mm -hmm. of it is growing up in the area. Did you consider yourself a Washington fan growing up? And then kind of off of that, when you look forward to 2024 and you look at what this Huskies team has been doing over the mm -hmm. last couple of years, do you have any sort of expectations for for Jed Fish and, and this Huskies team in their first season? Um, I would say, OK, so the first part of your question, I would say growing up here, I definitely was had an affinity towards the Huskies um, and it wasn't it wasn't football I I wasn't a big I wasn't really into football like that as I as I was growing up even though my dad had played in the was playing in NFL and in the CFL um, you know I played football as a kid but what really drew me to Washington was was basketball watching watching their uh, their basketball team I, basketball is my first love so um, I for sure have always been like I said, I had an affinity towards the Huskies for their their basketball. But as you know, as time went on, and um, you know, I started getting more into football. For sure, I mean, it's it's dogs over cougs till till the day we die. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I growing up here for sure. I think the presence of being at, like the Huskies is is deep. Um, going into 2024, man. I mean, 2023. That's left some very high expectations. Um, I think what needs to be done is just kind of, it's going to be, I wouldn't say a reset of the culture, but it's going to be different. I mean, it's bringing in a whole different coaching staff um, with, with some, with some returning, you know, my former tight end coach returning. So there is still that tradition that was, is still in there, but Expectation wise, man, I mean, as, especially being like the pact, it's, you know, co the conferences and college football is the landscape is completely different now. So I think setting the tone and winning, I mean, winning is always going to be the expectation for sure. I think Jed Fish for sure needs to come in and win. And he and he's proven that he can, you know, over these past couple of years. Um, the I think the fans are behind him. I, I, I think at least as far as I know, and as the sense that I get, I, I feel that there is big support for these guys, for the returning players, for the new players that have come in. I've kept my, you know, I've obviously have kept my eye on, um, 
you know, the, the transfers and stuff like that, man, it's, it's going to, it's going to be a good team for sure. I don't think there's going to be much, if any drop off at all. And I, I expect, you know, I, another legitimate run at the, the CFP. I like to hear that large, what do you got? So I wanted to kind of unpack Roman, the first part of Roman's question and tie it to yourself. Cause to, to your mm-hmm. point, you left and then came back. We've talked over the years, the JT Tuum allows the Emeka Bukas, the guys that leave is there, have you noticed a sense of kind of the last generation, we'll call it, or the last, to say, five to ten years of kids? What's the difference between wanting to stay home and knowing you can play at Washington and then also putting on for the state of Washington and going like mm-hmm. Paolo Blanchero did and playing at Duke or the two guys that I just mentioned going to Ohio State? Like, how do you, as, an, as a guy that's from the in-state, kind of, how do you explain that away when kind of maybe explain to fans the – pros and cons of staying versus putting the Washington on the map in a different way. Right. Well, I would say, at least for me, my personal experience, I think coming back and staying, staying here at home, um, there's this kind of like you, the fans get to see you kind of grow up, you know, you go into college as a kid, you're still a kid, right. And you're going to leave as a man and you go to high school here, you, you have, you give the fans a chance to really like, watch you grow from from a boy to a man and i think that's that's something special uh you can't do that going to you know you choose to go to an out-of-state school like yeah there's there's pros and cons to that and especially now with like nil deals and stuff it's you know it's that's a whole nother thing but the the most special thing i think about staying home personally is just being able to to grow up through th- completely through it through Washington sports, through through your elementary school, like your your junior club sports, into high school, middle school, high school sports, into into collegiate athletics, and then you know going from there, man, and you get to mature, and you're you're a Washington kid, you know, through and through. So I think that's special. That's the special thing about staying home for me. So talking about staying home and just along those same lines, one of the things that, you know, is, is a very big, just very harshly debated topic among Husky fans, especially is staying home and being able to keep all the top recruits from Washington at home. How important do you feel that that is for not only Jed Fish's staff or what it was for Kalen DeBoer's staff, but just in general for Washington athletics to make sure that they can keep all the top kids in the state at home playing for their hometown team. Um, I mean, Washington has very great athletes, always has. I think putting a priority on keeping these kids here, it, it should be not just for Washington, but for every school. That should be like the number one thing. We need to get the top guys in our state because you you keep you keep a tradition, you keep a pride, you have a you keep a fan base, right? Fans love to see hometown kids that they knew from like you hear all the big names, right? You want to see those guys stay home you want to see those guys and girls stay home in whatever sport they're playing. Um, I think it, I think honestly, Chris Peterson, coach, coach P, I think he did a great job of getting all the top, like a lot of the top guys to stay home, man. And that's, that's why they experienced such great success. And I think he started that. I think he started that having the home, the pro, I mean, like really brought it back to Washington, having that uh, home pride and, and really wearing that, that, um, you know, that purple and gold on your chest, man. Um, it's, it's, it's just something you can't, you can't put into words that feeling of like keeping all of the talent, like the homegrown, truly homegrown talent here instead of going home. It's important. I think it's the number one thing every top program should be, should, should be worried about is keeping their four or five star prospects that are in state here. At, and in, in state and going to their school. So we talked a little bit about 2023. Let's get into that a little more. Sure. Right after a message from one of our new sponsors over at Robin Hood Retirement. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the, their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. 30th, 
30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. And before we get back over to our interview, we also have to send a message to one of our good friends over at Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to help deliver a constant support excuse me, a constant supply of the latest videos from favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on the latest in the world of sports from March Madness, the NBA, the MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa's devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. So Lars, let's let's get into some 2023. What do you, what do you got for Deshaun? Yeah, so Deshaun, obviously 2023 built off of 2022. What was your? I just let's lay the foundation here before we rehash the season. What was? And I, it's easy in hindsight, but what was your kind of expectation for? Did you truly believe this was a national championship team, or were you kind of thinking? maybe 11 and two, 10 and two sort of thing. Where, where was your head at going into the season? Um, well, I would definitely say that I thought that a national championship, I, at the beginning of the season, if you were to ask me, will this team reach a natty? I would say, I would have said, I think there's a chance. I mean, there's a lot of tough teams in college football. I think there's a chance. I think they, I think their chance of getting to the CFP is, is strong. But getting all the way to the natty, I mean, that's there's a chance. But but as that season, as the season kind of went on, and you see them pick up momentum, and you see Penix like really taking this team to to places it hasn't been, you know, I, that's when my like my faith, and I'm sure a lot of other fans' faith started to grow. And like, yeah, man, this team not only can they go to the natty, they can they can take it. If, if they keep playing this way, they can take it. And there was times where there was a couple games where maybe, okay, a little shaky, but I don't think – I don't think the belief wavered. It just kept growing stronger and stronger every week, even with those a couple of those close games um, where they might have been just a couple calls away from a different outcome, right? I, I think the, the belief just kept growing, um, at least in my – I can speak for myself at least. Was there any one moment where you that what when it just kind of hit you that realization? Like I know when Lars and I were standing at, down there on the sideline at the end of the, the first Oregon game, and we saw Roma Dunze haul in that that go ahead touchdown with a minute and a half left. That that was kind of a moment for me where I was like, wow, yeah, this this team really is at a different level than what we've seen for a long time. Was was there one of those for you? I think the that moment, like where it really was like, whoa. And it took a while. It was after after the playoff game. I think how they went down and handled business after once that game was finished, and I was like, like, I like, I knew this team was good, but that was that was it was like it was like clinical, like how how your big players came to play and how they played in that moment in that big game on that big stage, and that's when I was like, man, this team is. This team is going to the national championship, man. And they had came close in 2016, right? Ran into a roadblock. I mean, Alabama, okay, at the time, sure. Um, but they're going to they were they were close and now they're they're doing it. And just thinking that, like, there wasn't like it wasn't a specific moment, but just after that game, I was like, that is that's crazy. I mean, I wish I could have been a part of that because that's like what like what a special, like what a special feeling, man. Like, and I and I there was play like dudes on that team that I had played with, right. That were freshmen when I were there, when I was there. And, and I could just like, man, like, I just remember feeling so like proud and happy for them, especially just cause I know those guys. I know Dev, I know Jack, I was in the room with those guys, you know what I'm saying? So, um, seeing that, uh, like, it, it was like, I don't know. It was like being like a, 
I guess it's like the pride like a parent gets, but I'm not, it, I don't know. It's just like, that's how I can describe it. I mean, it was just like, I was like proud to be a dog. And I always have been proud to be a dog, but that was like, a, like another level, you know? I'm so glad you mentioned Jack Westover because as a fellow, you know, tight end receiver, seeing mm-hmm. a kid that played two games of high school football his entire yeah. career, just what does that say about, you know, kind of going back to what we said last segment, because I, Roman and I love to kind of highlight certain players and, especially with the draft process, Jack's has seen his name elevate a lot. Just kind of how much does that validate your claim of, and it's not just your claim, but just having a, a walk on tight end from, I, I, I think he went to a day, but I could no, no, it was, um, was it Mount Mount Side? Side. Yeah, Mount Side. And um, to go from that to being an integral part of the team that competes for a national championship, just the depth of the state, like it's players like you, players like Jack that can, start as a walk-on and work all that way up that, that kind of validated kind of sh- share your opinion on just those kind of unique stories and those two in particular yeah man um that that hits home for me because it's like you come in with a mindset man like there's i wouldn't say a stigma man but there's like a there's expectations for guys you have an expectation for walk-ons like okay this guy if he does make the team like he'll be a scout team guy right like He'll, he'll stick around and maybe he'll get he'll maybe maybe he'll be a special teams guy maybe he'll get a scholarship his senior year man you're like his last year you know there's certain expectations that it's just it's just how it is right like i'm just being real um to see a guy like like jack just completely blow that out the water man it's like it just shows you the sky's the limit bro and it's so cliche that you can really do if you really really want it and you really put your mind to it you can you can truly achieve anything man he went from playing two games in high school to being invited to the nfl combine as a tight end who who would have ever thought that and he's not like it's not like he's a freak like six six two you know running a four three like he's not like a a physical specimen you know what i'm saying it's just a testament to hard work and extreme belief in yourself man so to see to see something like that and there's other stories out there like that as well um, very relatable, man. And it's like, it just makes you want to root for a kid, like a kid like that. So I, I'm, that's when I say like, I'm proud. I'm definitely like proud. So in, in that same vein, let's talk a little bit about Devin Culp because another guy who mm-hmm. you mentioned that was, that was a freshman in, yeah. in 2018 and he went to the combine and, and he blew up mm-hmm. a little bit, ran the fastest yeah. time tight end there. One of the fastest times of all time, really. And that was, yeah. it was really impressive. And he's a guy who, as Lars loves to talk about, cause Lars covered his recruitment coming yeah. at us of, of Gonzaga prep was yeah. playing all over the field and doing a lot of different things. And mm-hmm. he had some struggles. He had some drops early on in his UW career. And sure. really we saw him get better year after year year after year and of course it all culminated in that same moment for him being able to be invited to the nfl combine probably mm-hmm. going to be a late day two early day three yeah. kind of pick now after after his performance but what what kind of did you see from him maybe over the course of the season and just from your time with him what's that, that progression been like i think the biggest thing that i've seen with him just from his his time obviously you know spending i just got to spend one year with him right and then after that you know, I the biggest thing for me is watching his confidence grow. Um, I, I think that was marquee to where to uh, like ultimately it culminated him to going out to the combine to running at that four four seven. Um, I, that's just like a byproduct of it. That's not like what he was working for, obviously, but it's it's the byproduct of his confidence just grew. I, I I watched it. I watched it over the course of a year. And then I watched it from the outside, more of the outside. Um, watched it over the next three and. That's another another like those two guys, man, because they they were, you know, they they were they were the young bulls, they were the young pups coming into the room, man, and it's like, okay, like now we get to I get to see, I get to kind of see the start of their journey, and and now I'm watching the end of it, on to the next chapter to the start of a new journey, um, yeah, man, it's with Dev, it's definitely I just I know his confidence is real, and just knowing him, knowing him personally. Um, and I know that that is a bit, I could, I could see it just in the way he carries himself, the way he carried himself on the field, man, and the confidence in his abilities, the confidence in his knowledge of his assignments, it's, it all culminated into him getting that combine invite. And I think surprising a lot of those scouts, honestly, especially with that 40. 
Lars, you got anything else? Yeah, go for it. Oh, I was just asking about one quick one. Speaking of, we're, if we're talking about inside tight ends, did you have, did you know Quentin Moore coming out of Inglemore at all? Because I know he went the JUCO route, mm-hmm. um, but he was kind of, I believe, I want to say around your graduation time. I could be mistaken on that, but did, uh, did you know him at all or no? No, no. The the name, I, it like rang like, but I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, I know who that is. Cool. Mm-hmm. I was the only one saying because Quentin Moore had probably one of the most unique plays getting that touchdown yeah. against Oregon to seal the national yep. the, the Pac-12 championship. Yeah. The only catch he had all year. So it just right. goes to show the in-state tight ends can do every little thing in just yeah. one moment. In the biggest moment. In the biggest moment of his, probably his career, his, his, his uh, collegiate career right there. With that being said, Deshaun, let's turn back the clock a little bit. Let's talk about Chris Peterson. Okay. Right after a message from our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. We, you know, we talked about Utah State a little bit during this, this segment yesterday, and we We'd love to see Danny Sprinkles, the next coach at UW. And Deshaun, you, you mentioned basketball. That, that, would, that would be a, a real fun thing to see moving forward. Take the Nissan, Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can do that at shopnissanusa.com. So, Deshaun, you were obviously at Washington at a really great time. You were there in 2017, 2018. So you had a fantastic experience. You got to go to the Fiesta Bowl. You got to go to the Rose Bowl. And you got to do it all under one of the greatest coaches in Washington history, Chris Peterson. I I know it's a general question, but can you just talk about what that experience as a whole was like for you? Um, Yeah, man. I get that question all the time. Like, you, all the time. So I'm used to answering that. Um, Every, and I would say that everything that you've heard from the outside about Chris Peterson, just him as a coach, first off, is true. Everything that you read about him, about him being like a genuine, like a genuine man, a genuine guy, is true before, before coaching. It's 100% true, man. And that seeped into the program, right? That, that created kind of like, just the, the the standard, the culture. So being a part of something like that, it felt it was like a wholesome thing. It felt um, it didn't feel like I was just playing football. Like I was just playing for playing to win the next next conference game. And it felt like I was playing for much more. I, it's it's hard to describe it, but it, it felt like I was playing for like I was setting up my life, being in that era being a being a part of that being a part of his 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 uh his program his culture um it's it's special obviously like i you know i knew who chris peterson was man and watching him at boise state i i I used to uh like i liked watching boise state i wasn't really into college football like i said but i love to watch boise state because i like their blue field I, i i thought that was cool and so that was my first like ex like taste of experience of Chris Peterson he's a winner right and then to see him move over to Washington and then to get to be a part of that get to be a part of like a for sure a hall of fame college football hall of fame coach to be a part of that one of his teams it's a it's like it's it's an experience that not many will ever have you know what I'm saying to play for a coach uh at a caliber like that so it's special it truly is so, so one of the things Coach Peterson was known for, and you kind of use, I think, two out of three words that he used in his saying is built for life. Yep. Just how do you feel that that has helped you translate into continuing on your, not just your NFL journey and your football journey, but just you as a person, you as a man? Because that's one thing Chris Peterson always talked about is you're going to come here as a, as a young man, as a teenager, and you're going to leave a man. That's what mm-hmm. pretty much every player to a man will say. Just how, did you, how, did, how have you lived that through? How do I live that through, man? I think there was a couple of things that he had preached and harped on that really stuck with me. And one of those was how you do small things is how you do all things. Um, and that's part of the build for life, man. And that's, it, it's it's building, those stuff like that is building you for life. It's not just, okay, the small details of your assignment. Okay, that's translating to 
this like how you are in relationships in your life with with people around you how you are um in your in your corporate jobs um just how you interact with the world how you do small things is how you do all things um that that's one of the, like i said that's one of the things that he had preached that really stuck with me and it it just goes into that build for life because what he's saying it might be towards whatever assignment that we need to you know need to be worrying about but you can also put that towards anything in real life anything in, in the in the real world it's all translatable that everything that he was teaching us about football that he had his staff teaching us about football could be translated to the to to reality you know to the outside world to outside of football outside of the x and o's so you you talked a little bit about his staff and it's only right to kind of circle back to somebody we, you you mentioned a little bit earlier and that's tight ends coach jordan pow pow where mm-hmm. obviously he was your position coach at the time he's come back as a member of jed fish's staff what were some of the things that you learned under him and what are some of those things that might make him successful once again uh returning to washington in the same role I think what I learned most under Coach Powell um, would just be how to be detailed, like intentionally detailed. Um, it's not something he like directly like was preaching to us and not directly teaching, but just in his methods of how he was, how he would coach. And especially me coming in as a receiver, I'd never played tight end in my life. So, and coming in and playing tight end at a power five school, in the Pac-12 conference, right, and a, on a very good team, I had to be extremely detailed, extremely detailed, and him coaching me, it was indirectly teaching me how to be very intentional and very detailed um, with with everything, with how I listen to, how I listen to schemes, how I read the playbook how I watched film, how I put my practice habits. And those are things that have carried on with me and have gotten me to places and have opened doors for me that, you know, otherwise wouldn't have been opened if, if I didn't have the level of detail that I was able to hone in um, playing under Coach Powell. And so now with Coach Peterson, obviously you played for him for two years in 17 and 18, and then he leaves in 19. I'm not going to ask you the, 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 I'm gonna, I'm, the I want to phrase it this way. What did you get the sense of Coach P that he would stay long term? And did that, when he ended up resigning after 20, you know, and kind of moving into the mm-hmm. next stage of his football life and helping out with NIL and things like that, did, so, did that surprise you? Um, and kind of, how was your emotions like just because the impact that he clearly had on you as a person or as a player did it kind of how, how where were you when you found the news because i know it shocked pretty much all of us covering the team mm-hmm. yeah no it shocked me too i think it shocked i think it shocked everybody i don't think really anybody saw that coming uh i mean probably people closest to him I, even still probably when he told the people closest to him I, I maybe they thought they they were pretty shocked too i was definitely surprised i you know i had things were dipping a little bit, but I mean, the, the, the culture was still there. Like the tradition was still there, man. Just, just so to see him just kind of completely like take a step away from that into something like pivot that quickly or that like that suddenly it, it was for sure surprise. So just like you guys, like I didn't see it coming. I don't think anybody really saw it coming except probably, like I said, those closest to him. Um, yeah, I was, I was very, I was very surprised to hear that. And then kind of on the back end, just real quick, Roman, do you think he'll, no, I, I know it's been a while and I've kind of floated this with Roman a couple of times since he departed. Do you think there's a chance he ever gets back in the game or is the sport evolved too much with, and again, not that Chris Peterson's not pro mm-hmm. players getting paid. Cause I think, I think he would say, yeah, I want them to get paid, but I want them to correctly get paid. I want them, yeah. it, I don't want it to be a pay for play, which really the sport is kind of turning into. Yeah. And that's sad to see. I think the, the landscape of college football, even in, I would say five years, even like two years is going to be, I, I mean, you look at NFL free agency, right? It, it's going to, it's going to kind of be, I, I don't know. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing with that, with yeah. the NIL. But as far as, uh, Coach Pete stepping back in to go. Co- I I don't know. I it 
I don't know. You know, I don't keep in close. I don't keep in contact with Coach Pete Wright. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, hey, what's up? What do you, you know, what do you think of like? But I, I think maybe he's happy where he's at. I think he's happy in the position that he's at. Um, and I think he's, he might be content to stay there. I, I don't see. I, I mean, he could. He for sure could. He could. He could. Go, he could for sure still coach. Hundred percent. Um, will he? I. I don't, I, I don't know the guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, a fly on the wall, but I don't know. Maybe he's happy with how, where he's at right now in the direction that college football is heading and where he is. Maybe, maybe he doesn't need to coach anymore. Maybe he doesn't want to, you know? And I can just, because this is real, just, the only reason I ask that is because with Nick Saban saying, like, this isn't the sport that I used to love, where I love just to develop guys. And yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want them to get paid and, and, you know, get quality of life and all that. But it's, it's changed so much. I think, it, I, I'm just curious. I, to me, I don't know if his, I think his message would resonate, but it would just be in this climate and just be too hard. So I was just curious. Yeah. About. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. It's, like I said, the whole NIL talk, man, that could, that could fill up a show itself. Yeah. That's, yeah. it's just, it's insane, you know? Um, yeah, it's definitely not the, not the college football that we used to know. And it's changing right before our eyes very quickly. Deshaun, before we get out of here, let, let everybody know where they can find you, what you're going to be doing over the next couple of months, please. Yeah. So, um, you know, AFL is the return of the AFL 2024. Um, I will be, I have signed, it will be a part of the uh, AFL Washington Wolfpack team based out of Everett, Washington. Um, camp starts April 1st. We will have our first game. It'll be away in Salem, uh, April 27th. We have three games. They just announced it today. We have, we will have three games, uh, that are broadcasted on, broadcasted on the NFL network throughout the year. It'll be a Thursday night game, a Sunday night game and a Saturday night game, I believe. Um, but yeah, you can definitely, you could check, you check out the schedule, check, uh, check out their Instagram. I'm sure they have a Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook. Um, check out their Twitter or their X um schedules out uh and we'll be playing up at the angels of the winds arena in in everett washington man yeah you know come through come come support uh come support a local hometown kid uh, there's a lot of local kids that didn't you know there's actually a couple other players on the team that went to UW. i'll be playing with brandon wellington malik braxton austin joiner are will also be uh my teammates that are also playing with the uh with the wolfpack so come come support some uh some former dogs Deshaun, this has been fantastic. Oh, Lars, yeah, go ahead. I'm just so glad Austin's getting back into football, man. We yeah. got to show sometime because his story is is it's lately I lot it's Liatu Latu before Latu. So yes, yes, man. Uh, it's that's definitely a guy you for sure have to tap in with, man, because it definitely. is it is a good story. It's a good guy to root for for sure. Deshaun, thank you so much for being here. This has been absolutely fantastic. Lars, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the Everydayers for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support. We're going to have so many more fantastic chats like this coming your way with some more special guests. So please make sure you stay tuned and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. So that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We're everywhere. We're updating this channel with new content every single day. So please make sure you like the video. Click that bell so you never miss when we post a new video. Leave us a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that. If you're audio only please leave us a five-star review as it all really does help the show out a lot thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you on monday